How do I play Into the Deep? In Into the Deep, there are three structures on the field, the submersible and the two basket structures. Almost all the game pieces in Into the Deep start inside the submersible laying on the floor. The game pieces, called samples, can be scored in either the baskets, the net, or back on the submersible when attached to a clip to form a specimen. This is a sample, a one and a half inch by one and a half inch by three and a half inch rectangular prism. It's got these triangular cutouts in it, creating these sort of flanges on each of the four corners that make it a little bit easier for a robot to grab either with a claw or with another mechanism. There are three colors of samples, yellow, red, and blue. Red and blue correspond to your alliance color, while yellow is the neutral sample that both alliances can handle. This is a clip. It's designed specifically to attach to the sample in one of two orientations. The first orientation is the vertical orientation, like so. The clip can also be attached horizontally, though note that it can be installed on different sides of the sample. This can make it easier or harder for your robot to collect. Your alliance starts with 20 clips in the human player station. Once a sample is returned, or with some of the starting samples that you will get when you start the match, the human player can attach a clip to a sample to form a specimen, which they can then place on the field border or on the ground for your robot to collect. Specimens, once collected, can be placed on the submersible on one of the two chambers. These are the red and blue pipes on the submersible. Placing a specimen on the high and low pipes is worth a different amount of points, but they do present a similar challenge. In Into the Deep, there's both a high and a low basket. You can score both your alliance colored samples and the neutral samples in your basket, and technically the opponent samples, but you do have to reference the other penalties associated with handling your opponent samples. The baskets do not have a backboard, so be careful when placing your samples into the baskets you don't eject them from the field. They will not be returned. The baskets also have a limited capacity. If you're trying to fit as many samples as you can into the high bucket, you may find that you run out of space and have to stack on top of the bucket to get them scored. Scoring in the high and even low basket may incentivize you to create some sort of linear motion mechanism, something that can reach up very high very fast and be very precise when placing. If you do miss, sometimes your game piece will fall into the net directly below the basket. Scoring a sample in the net is still worth points. The submersible is a large structure in the center of the field, taking up about four tiles worth of space. On the submersible are four chambers, two for each alliance, and four climbing rungs, two for each alliance. The chambers are colored red and blue for your alliance color. The rungs have red and blue tape on them to define who is climbing on which side of the submersible. Also connected to the submersible are the ascent zones, which you have to keep in mind at the end of the match. Most of your game pieces start inside the submersible, contained by the four metal pieces at the bottom. You'll have to reach over these pieces and into the submersible to pull out samples. Be careful not to get whatever mechanism you're using to reach in the submersible caught on the climbing rungs or the chambers or even other robots that may be competing for the same samples inside the submersible. Also note that if you're reaching in from the side where the chambers are, you could knock some of your specimens off the chambers if you're not careful. You can fully enter the submersible, but keep in mind the rules about endgame in the last 30 seconds and keep in mind that this will require a different robot design than many other robots you'll see this year. Going up over the little metal bit into the submersible will typically beat you on top of the samples that are inside the submersible, and you'll have to find a way to either get off of those or be able to drive around in the pile. On the long side of the submersible, where your alliance's climbing rungs are, you can begin to climb in the last 30 seconds of the match from the ascent zone. Do not start climbing from within the submersible. There is a rule against this. The lowest level of climbing is called level one. This requires you to be touching the low bar, but not climbed. Level two requires you to be fully supported by that low bar. And level three is the highest level of climb and requires you to be fully supported by that top bar. Remember to read the rules to understand exactly how each of these are called and how it's understood by the referees. Make sure you don't enter your opponent's ascent zone at the end of the match or contact them while they're trying to climb. This could result in a penalty for you. You could make a specific mechanism to handle your climbing for you, or you could try attaching it to something else that you're using. Many of the core challenges in Into the Deep require your robot to reach either very far out or very far up. Collecting a sample from the submersible requires you to reach inside the submersible to collect them. 
Scoring the sample in the baskets requires reaching up to one of the two different basket heights or down to the net. So you may be able to repurpose some of your mechanisms to use for multiple stages of this game. Into the Deep is a complicated challenge, but it does require a lot of similar mechanisms to do different tasks. Make sure to read the rules really closely to pick a strategy, understand your strategy, and design a robot that can score the most amount of points. Work with your team to decide which challenges you want to tackle and how to prioritize them. Time is your most valuable resource in this game. Make sure to use it wisely. Once again, make sure to read the rules very carefully before you begin construction. You want to make sure that you have the same understanding of the rules that the referees at your event will. There are a lot of ways to complete each of the challenges in Into the Deep, and we're so excited to see how teams this season tackle the challenge. And that's how you play Into the Deep.